we're in Papua New Guinea exploring the many plants and life forms, our attention is drawn to something that we keep running into, small creatures that are very important, but sometimes scary, spiders. Spiders are found all over the world, on every continent except Antarctica. Although there are many species here, it's a small number compared to the over 43,000 species which have been identified in the world. Spiders are considered anthropods and they have segmented bodies. So there's the cephalothorax and then the abdomen. All spiders are gonna have four pairs of legs. Now in the abdomen, there are several pairs of spinneret glands and each one of these glands have a special purpose. One gland may secrete a thread that sort of uses as a safety line for the spider. Another gland may produce a thread that is um, uh, sticky uh, to produce the web to capture the prey. And then uh, another gland may produce a finer silk and that's so that they can wrap their, their prey up um, and, and eat that. Now silk, when it comes out, is, is basically like a liquid and then it hardens, and it hardens not because it's exposed to air, but because it's stretching those proteins out, because it's comprised of protein. And when it stretches that protein out, it basically changes the configuration or the structure of the protein. Spider webs are as soft as cotton, and yet they're stronger than steel. And they have a unique characteristic in that they're with their elasticity. The webs help the spider to basically capture the prey without using a lot of energy sort of chasing down their prey. Well, along this way, there are tiny little droplets of glue. And that glue, when an insect flies into the, the web, secures that insect into the web. So these droplets of glue will eventually dry. And so it's imperative that the spider creates a new web almost every day to ensure that the stickiness uh, exists within its web. After catching its food in the web, the spider confines its prey with silk, then injects digestive enzymes that liquefy the prey's insides. The spider cannot chew food. It must suck up the liquefied prey insides with a special part of its mouth that is shaped like a short drinking straw. At the end of the day, some spiders will actually consume that web basically getting that protein back into their bodies and recycling the protein to, to give them strength and energy for the next day. Spider webs can become very large, like this one we came across on our trek. Comprised of many webs, it was the largest continuous one I have ever seen. I was relieved we were seeing this in the daylight and not walking through it during the night. This matrix was home to several species of spiders, many with their egg sacs. Spiders lay on average 100 eggs and wrap the eggs in silk, creating the sac. The mother can stay alive until their baby spiders hatch, or she may die after creating the sac for her children. Venoms of spiders can be quite dangerous. Most, like this one, are typically harmless spiders. Some spider venoms are neurotoxins, which means they affect the nervous system. But the venoms researchers are now looking at for possible medical treatments with cardiac arrhythmias, which is like an irregular heartbeat, strokes, and in Alzheimer's. They're also looking at the venoms because these venoms kill insects. So they're looking at this as a more natural pesticide. The, the venoms kill the insects, but they're basically harmless to a lot of invertebrates. So uh, maybe a great option for, for newer pesticides and more efficient pesticides uh, for us in the world. Although I cringe when one is crawling on me or when we see a poisonous one, spiders are amazing creatures to be appreciated and respected. And the beauty is that their contributions to medicine and our planet have yet to be fully realized. <laughs>